Welcome to lecture 38, exercise 2. The challenge for this exercise is to write a program that allows a teacher to enter in an amount of students. For each student, ask the teacher to enter in their name and final score for the class. When the teacher is done entering the data, print the highest grade in the class and the average grade for the class. Now this is going to be a challenging exercise. If you are going to try this on your own, it will be hard, I'm not going to lie. But if you are going to try, go ahead and try it now. If not, now I'm going to solve it. So there's a lot of things going on here. We need to basically get in the amount of students. So let's say there's 20 students, 30 students, whatever the amount of students in the class. We need to get that number because we need to build basically arrays based off of the amount of students. So if there's 25 students, the arrays should have 25 elements. So we can't use that shorthand notation for building an array in this example. We actually have to do the manual way that we did in the first lecture on arrays. So we need that number of students. Then we need a way to basically keep track of all their names and their final scores. So there's two pieces of data for each student, their name and score. So that should tell you that we need a parallel array. So that's that. And then when the teacher is done entering the data, we need to print the highest grade and the average for the class. So the highest grade, that will be a little challenging. I'm not going to do that till the end, probably. I'll do the average grade first, and then we'll go back and do the highest grade so you're, you're not that confused. The highest grade is a little hard to think of on your own. And then the average grade for the class. So I could do all these separate things, all these different challenges in different loops. But I'm going to try to combine them all into one loop to make, keep it the clean, as clean as possible. But it may get a little bit more confusing. I know that when I do it in separate loops, it makes it easier to read. But I wanted to keep it efficient. So I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can as we go along. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually get some variables created. And we need to ask the user how many students are in their class. Because that will change depending on whoever, whatever teacher is using this program. So let's start off by just saying console.write line, enter the amount of students in your class. And I'm going to say int amount of students equals int.parse console.read line. So now we have the amount of students stored into this variable. So we need to store their name and their final score for the class and we need to basically enter in that data. So how are we going to do that? We're going to store it into an array because there's a lot of students. So we need an array for their name, so we need a string array. So we need a string array, and I'll say student names equals new string array. Now this is the manual way. The reason why I need to do it this way is because I don't know the data. What I don't know what data is going to be inside this array because they haven't entered it yet. So I'm just basically creating empty, um, empty elements that they can put in later. So I need enough elements for all my students. So I'm going to use amount of students. So the amount of elements in this array is directly related to what number they type in. So if they type in 50, there'll be 50 elements in this array. 60, there'll be 60 elements in this array. So that's the string array, but then we also need the, the grade array. So we need, a, we'll say a double, double grade array, I'll just say grades, um, equals new double array, and it's going to be the amount of students again, because this is a parallel array, so they both need to have the same amount of elements. That's how a parallel array works. Okay, it also says that we need some way to track the highest grade and the average grade. So we'll just go ahead and put that in now also so we need some variables to keep track of that information so we'll have double average grade we'll leave it blank for now and we'll also make one for highest grade but we're not going to use it yet double highest grade so we have these extra variables this is going to be responsible for keeping those this is responsible for the, the names and the, and the grades, highest grade, average grade, amount of students. So we have all this data stored. Now we need to basically build our one loop that's going to manage and do all of these things. So the first thing we need to do is every we need to basically prompt the user to enter in the student's name and grade for every student. So we need some kind of loop. So we're going to say for int i equals zero as long as i is less than um, amount of students or I could use students name dot length they're all the same so 
as long as i has less than amount of students i plus plus so now for each student i'm going to prompt the user to enter in their name and grade final grade so cause that right line enter students now i'm going to also add the student's number so for example if this is the first student i'm going to say enter students enter students one name enter students one uh, grade so we need to basically attach in some kind of data that represents what number we're on and luckily i is doing that so i'm going to say enter student number and then i'll do a placeholders grade so enter student number blank grade now what am i going to put in there if i just do i if i just put i into this position that means the first student will be zero which I don't want it to say enter student number zero's grade. I want it to always start with one. So I'm going to do I plus one here. And that will make it go from one to whatever instead of saying zero to whatever. That will make that work better. And I'll show you that when I actually run it. So enter student number. No, this should be name, first of all. His name. So then we'll take whatever they have and we'll store it into the name. So we're going to say student's name sub I equals console dot read line now if I wanted to I could make it a little bit easier for you to understand by saying string name equals console dot read line and then just saying this is equal to name because you're probably more used to that so this console dot read line now that gets put into the string variable and then I set the first element so because I need to keep track of all these students so I'm saying the first element inside of this array is equal to whatever the name is. So whatever the first name they type in, that will go into the first slot. Once I increases by one, then it will go into the second slot, then the third slot. We, we've seen things like this already. So that's the name is now stored. Now I'll do one for its grade, console right line. It's, this is gonna be the same thing, basically. I'm just gonna change it to grade. So then this will be double grade equals double dot parse console dot read line so now we have their grade and then we'll store it into the grades array grade sub i equals grade so whatever their grade is i'll store it into grades sub i so now we have the name of student for every student basically if we let me just run it now it's not going to do anything yet but it's going to ask me for the information so well, look Enter the amount of students in your class. I'll say I have four students. Notice how it goes, enter student number one name. Because I'm using that I plus one, it's not saying enter zero's name, it's saying enter one name. So I'll say Bob, enter number one's grade. He got, he got a 50. Enter student number two's name, Tim, 60. Fred, 40. And Sam, 100. See, and now the program just ended, but if you look, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4 instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, but that, that I plus 1 is doing that. And now in my two arrays, I have their names and their grades for every student stored in memory. So that's why we needed those parallel arrays to hold the double and the string. So that's what's happening so far. After this code is done running, each array has all the information they need. Okay, so now let's start keeping track of the average grade. So we have all the students' grades and names, but while we're doing this, we want to keep track of the average. And how do you calculate average? Basically, it's all the grades added up together, then divided by, at the end, it's divided by the amount of grades. So every single time we enter a grade into the array, we should also add it to this double, I mean, this average grade. So to start keeping that sum because we need to add every single one together and then at the end we'll divide it by the length so every single time I, add, I put into the array I should also add it to average grade so I'm gonna say average grade plus equal grade so every time I add a grade average grade is again we have an error okay I just need to give this I'll set them both equal to zero to start with actually no this week something else let's get to that so average grade plus equals grade so every single time a grades entered we're adding it to this average grade variable, which is now just keeping the sum of every single grade. At the end, I'm going to print the average. So when the loop is done, this is where I'm going to do all the printing stuff. 
all down here. So I'm going to now calculate the real average. So I'm going to use the same variable and just overwrite it and print the average. Or I can just, I'll do it two ways, and I'll also print it out first. So for example, I'll say double average equals the average grade divided by the amount of students, basically. So this is all the grades added up together, and then I'm dividing it by the amount of students, and then it's being stored into this average. But instead of making a brand new variable, I could just reuse this variable and say, and just overwrite the value. Average grade is equal to average grade divided by amount of students. This is also the same thing as saying divide equal. Remember I went over this? So saying average grade divide equal amount of students will basically divide this number by that number and then reassign it to whatever it was. So that this is equivalent to that, which is also basically equivalent to this. Whatever you understand better, you can use. I'll, I'll use it like this because I want to show you guys the advanced stuff. So average grade divide equals amount of numbers. So now average grade is the actual average. So if I go the average grade of the class is and put an average grade, now it's going to tell me the average. So let's try this again. We'll just do two students to test if it works. Bob, he got a 60. And Tom got a 60 also just to check it works. The average is 60. Let's do one more. So I know it's working now. I'll do two. Bob, 86. Tim, 97. The average grade of the class was a 91.5. So the average is working so far. The last thing that we need to do, I'm pretty sure, is just the highest grade for the class. So now the algorithm for highest grade is a little confusing. Basically how you calculate highest grade is you need to check every single element and say, is this higher than what I already think the higher grade is? If it is, then overwrite it with that. So this variable highest grade is, is in charge of keeping track of the highest grade. So I'll, I'll set it equal to zero for now. That's fine. So now every single time this loop runs, I'm going to do an if statement. I'm going to say if whatever that grade is, so the grade that was just entered, if that grade is greater than the highest grade. So if it's greater than the highest grade, then I'm going to, then I'm going to say the highest grade is equal to grade. So I'm basically just overwriting this highest grade variable every single time if the grade that's typed in is higher. So it's always keeping track of the highest. If I type in 50 the first time, is 50 greater than 0? Yes, it is. So now, now that 0 becomes the 50. Now let's say the second number I typed in is a 40. It will say, is 40 greater than 50? No, it's not. So it doesn't overwrite it. It stays at that 50. So by the end of the entire loop, the highest grade will be the highest grade. Whatever the highest grade, it will store that, and it will remember that grade and only that grade. It will only overwrite that grade if the new grade is higher and then that will become the highest grade so this is the algorithm of how you calculate highest grade so now the last thing I want to do I'm going to print also console that right line the highest grade of the class is and I'll put in highest grade let's try that now two students Tim 78 Tom 99 so the average grade of the class is 88.5, and the highest grade of the class is 99. So now we are getting that highest grade. If I wanted to do the highest grade first, just to show you that, just to show you that it works, I'm going to say Bob. Oops, that's supposed to be a number of students. I'm going to say two students, Bob, 99, Tim, 55. And you can see that it, the 55 did not overwrite the 99, and it remembered that the 99 is the highest grade. Now, I want to make it just a little bit more advanced. This will be the last uh, part that I want to add. I want to show, okay, the highest grade is 99, but then I also want to display the highest, what his name was. So if it was a 99 was the highest grade, I want to say, okay, that was Bob. Bob got the 99. So, there's a lot of ways we can do that, but I think the easiest way to do it is just create another string variable. I'm going to say string highest, highest grade name, and then I'll, I'll set it equal to blank right now. 
Then inside of here, when I do set the highest grade to something, I'm going to also set the highest grade's name as well. So I'm going to say the highest grade's name is equal to name. Because name was also what's being entered in, in that iteration. So name is their name. I'll set the highest grade's name and the highest grade's grade. So I'll add that to the output and then I'll say and hit the and their name was one. And I'll put in highest grade name. So now the highest grade of the class is blank and their name was blank. So now let's see what happens. Let's do like four numbers. Tom 67, Fred 78, Tim 76, um, uh, Jim 65. Enter. The average grade of the class is 71.5. The highest grade of the class is 78, and their name was Fred. So let's check if that's right. So Fred did get a 78, and that 78 is the highest grade. So now we have, it can tell the, the name of the highest student and the grade of the highest student. And you can imagine, you know, if you had 30 students or something like that, this can actually be a little practical. So that's all I wanted to do in this exercise. It's pretty long, so and there's a lot of things going on in here. So I want you to reread this code and make sure that you actually understand it. I'm handling all the code with grades, names, average, and the highest grade all inside of one loop. That could be a little confusing for some people. It's all happening inside of one loop. But that's it for this exercise. The last exercise is going to be a little game that we're going to make it is going to be slightly harder than this or maybe at the same exact level um, but it's actually going to be a cool game that we can make